good day, my brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome you to JCC Sunday Schools in Session, where Sunday school matters to God. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of all our Sunday school lessons. I would like to take this time also to personally thank each and every one of you for taking the time to visit us. We are very appreciative of your presence here today. Our lesson is called Saul's Attempt on David's Life. It will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 8 through 17. And we'll be dealing with jealousy and its effect on people. Let's get into the lesson and see what we can learn from it today. Verse 8 reads, And there was a war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. War breaks out again with the Philistines. We learned last week as David championed over Goliath. We see now he's being promoted to the captain of the Israel's the army, and he goes out again and fights the Philistines. We can see God's accomplishing his will through his chosen vessel. When God has chosen us for a task and we remain obedient to the calling God will bring about on us, God will bring about blessings on our lives. God's hand of favor is upon David, and he's doing the things that bring amazement to the people. God's favor all allows David to fight with valor and bravery and makes the Philistines here, we see in this verse, flee. But instead of returning to his hometown with a hero's welcome, he becomes a victim of jealousy. We can see that the making of why Saul's anger and jealousy kindled. It is amazing what position and power will do to a person. Saul started out humble and he looked to do great things for God. But when the attention of the people go from him to David, jealousy begins to be birthed inside of Saul. And when jealousy gets his, comes to his full growth, rage comes from his actions. Let's see how that is played out here in the next few verses. Verse 9 and 10 read, And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. And as he sat in the house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand, and Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. There is danger when jealousy overtakes a king or a leader. First, let me explain something. The evil spirit that is spoken of in this here verse is not from the Lord as we look and think and as we read that. God's holiness has no association with sin, wickedness, or evil. Now, God can remove his anointing, and this will allow evil to knock at our door. So because the favor of God had left Saul, and now it gave an opportunity for the evil to come into his life. Saul already had a seed of evil and corruption as he allowed this to give way to him and allow evil to come in and overtake him. When we're not under the divine protection of the Lord, we leave his protection. We leave the doorway open for sin to creep in. Evil has a tendency to slither its way right into our homes and make a residence. This could have been the result from what from Saul's disobedience. We know he was disobedient to God, and because of that, God's favor left him, and the spirit of a jealousy possibly could have came then as Saul did not serve God wholeheartedly. When the favor of God left him because of his disobedience at Gilgal, it took a turn, his life took a turn for the worse. And we see here, now Saul Instead of being a humble servant who's willing to do everything to please God, he's now looking to kill one of God's own. We see the spiritual truce between Saul and David. If you go back and read in that seventh verse, it didn't last long. Just as war broke out in the Philistines, we see now war is about to break out again with God's anointed and Saul. We see also that the spirit of jealousy now is beginning to operate even more powerfully in Saul. The harp in the past was the thing that David used to go in and calm Saul. We see that it calmed that evil spirit. But the longer we allow evil to operate, the longer we allow evil to linger inside of us, the more powerful it gets. The point for us in this is that we cannot let sin and evil go unchecked. The longer, again, they linger, the more powerful they will become. Jealousy is a fire 
that consumes everything in its past. What are some of the characteristics of jealousy? Jealousy, when we see it, has a way to prevent us from seeing things clearly. We only see it one way, and it usually is not the right way. We can't enjoy the blessings of God if we are jealous of the blessings of others. Jealousy, like I say, it brings out resentment towards others. You resent your brothers and sisters in Christ more so than you should be loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. As a child of God, we are to resist jealousy at all costs. If we're in position of leadership, we must address this matter urgently. As we begin to see this thing unfolding in Saul's life, although Jonathan, his son, tried to bring about peace in that seventh verse, but because Saul didn't seek divine deliverance from this spirit, it inevitably took control of Saul. The presence of evil, of this evil spirit in Saul, caused a jealousy, a rage to brew in him, and it made him want to commit murder. This is against the commandments of God. See, when we have evil within our presence, it will make a person go against the commands of God, which again alludes to the fact, why would God give us something that will make us deliberately disobey him? God didn't give him the evil spirit because of Saul's disobedience and the favor of God left caused the evil spirit to have an opportunity to come in his life. So a life lesson here is, Evil in a person will make them go against the very holy nature of God and his commandments. This is when we can see that we should be in constant prayer for someone because they have allowed evil to knock at their door and they answered it and invited it in. Saul tried to kill David, but God's anointed escape. God always makes a way of escape. James 4 and 7 tells us to submit ourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. We can learn an important point from this lesson. When under attack from the enemy, we need to to submit to God and resist. Submission and resistance are the key elements that help us to overcome the attack and will make the devil flee. Poor Saul seemed to have succumbed versus resisting. He gave in instead of resisting evil that was knocking at his door. We learn that the spirit of jealousy will be used by the enemy to defeat and destroy a child of God. And we must always be careful and be studious and also ask for discernment to understand when we are operating in the presence of someone who may have the spirit of jealousy. Verse 11 and 12 says, So Saul sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michal let David down through a window. He went and fled and escaped. We see the influence of the Spirit has made Saul continue to pursue God's anointed. Notice what the Spirit is doing through Saul. The Spirit inside of Saul commands the people to be sent, to watch, and to slay God's anointed. The life application for us is this right here. Our prayer life, we need to speak against the tactics of the enemy. Speak against the agent of the enemy who are sent against you, who are watching you to find out your vulnerabilities, and also the ones who are looking for the opportunity to slay you. This is a powerful point that we can bring into our prayer life to ask God to help us overcome the tactics of the enemy. If we allow him, our God will make a way of escape. It's up to us to use that way of escape that's provided. If we don't use the way of escape, we can always fall victim to the threat and tactics of the enemy. Notice how this all works out for the good. David's wife encouraged her husband to flee. We see love is a powerful instrument in the heavenly arsenal. Love made her choose her husband over her father. Because of the love of God, because of the agape-ness of God, it allows us to make the right choices, even when there's not one that we really want to deal with when it comes to family members. Mikhail could have faced death herself, especially Saul being in this evil state. He could have easily came in because of his anger and killed her. But because God allowed 
her to be an instrument that could be used to save that holy and anointed vessel of God, she used a deception tactic. She told him to go down the window so you could be free. We see God making a way where there seemed to be no way. God works on our behalf even when we can't see it. God makes a way out of no way if we would just allow him to be used or come to our rescue. God working through the love of a wife made a way of escape. Verse 13 says that Michael took an image and laid it in the bed and put a window of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with cloth. And when Saul sent messages to take David, she said he is sick. Again, Mikhail made an image of a person lying in bed to fool all who came by. She did this to deceive her father. What can we learn from this? Sometimes our loyalty to God means that we have to break our loyalty to those who we're close to. It's better to be loyal to God versus trying to be loyal to a friend or a family member who's trying to go against the will of God. We see this in the Bible as Abraham was asked to leave his family in order to obey God. And as a result of that obedience, he was blessed to become a father of the nation of Israel. Christ says we must get our priorities together in order to be his disciple. He said that you had to hate mama, daddy, brother, sister, auntie, and uncle in order to be his disciple. He wasn't saying hate in the, in the terminology that we think of hate. He was saying hate in the aspect that you need to get your priorities together. I should always come first. That means that we got to lay, again, family and friends to the side to do the work that God has called us to do. Our loyalty to God may require us to make some hard choices, as probably this was for Mikhail. Verse 15 through 17 reads, And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to the bed, in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers came into the house, there was an image in the bed with pillow of goat hair for his bolster. And Saul said to Mikhail, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he escaped? And Mikhail answered, Saul, he said unto me, let me go. Why should I kill thee? We see the spirit of jealousy again will persist to achieve its desired result. Saul was angered, but he still persisted. He wanted him to bring David up in the bed. We can see that the spirit of jealousy operates in a person. There were, they will have no compassion. Saul did not have any compassion that David was supposedly in the bed sick. He wanted him to bring the whole bed to him so he could still kill David. There is no compassion in this. And this is the result of the presence of evil when it's operating in a person. They don't have compassion for others. We saw that Jesus Christ, on his walk on this earth, he constantly had compassion for those that were in a less fortunate position. But the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of evil, that was operating in Saul allowed him not to have any compassion whatsoever for another person. Please notice in, in verse 15, the problem in verse 15, Saul assumed he could choose who lives and dies. When you look at that, he was making a choice on his own. And we know that the Bible teaches us that we are not to murder. But Saul, because of this influence, because of the enemy that was operating on the inside of him, made him go in and make, make that choice himself of who can live and who can die. He's taking on the characteristics of the enemy himself. Enemy wanted to go in and destroy. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And that is the characteristic of the enemy. And we see here Saul taking on those same characteristics. God is the one who decides who lives and dies, not kings or leaders. Saul is operating outside the will of God here. And he's operating in the will of the enemy. Saul here is ferocious. He's, he's furious with his daughter. He could not believe his daughter would go out and deceive him. But we can see God will turn even the closest associates of his enemy against each other to accomplish his purpose. God can work a miraculous thing out in, in order to still allow his plan to come into fruition. This goes back to our golden text for this lesson. Many are afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. This is so true in this lesson in our lives as well. Envy and jealousy lead to strife and pursuit of murder. We see that he 
The real enemy here is Saul. Saul's pride, his bitterness, his resentment, this jealousy, this envy, this strife that's building in him has built a foundation for the evil, this, this evil spirit to operate on. A life application is this. We must be content with the thing God has given us and trust him for the things we need. Because if we don't, we may fall victim to this evil, this same evil spirit that is trying to overcome a Saul that has, excuse me, that has overcome Saul and now could easily try to overcome us as well. For this lesson, we can see the power that evil, that the evil spirit has of, to influence. It has the power to influence others. David never did anything disloyal to Saul. When he needed someone to, to, to calm the evil spirit, David was there to play the harp. When, when, the, when they needed a giant killer, David was there. When they needed a warrior to fight the enemy, uh, the Philistine, David assumed the position of captain of the army and fought for his leader. Saul should have been grateful, but the power of envy, the power of jealousy, coupled with the, the spirit of evil, makes one powerless to stop in their strength. It can only be done in the power and strength of the Lord to overcome evil. What could happen? Saul probably could have prevented this evil from ever coming up and consuming him. But because he refused to seek the Lord, because he refused to submit and, and seek God's help in this situation, this evil spirit took over. Seeking him, like I said, my brother, seeking the Lord will help lead us to have a, a spirit of contentment. And it can prevent the attributes of this evil spirit from gaining a foothold in our lives. That ends our lesson today. And again, I would like to thank you for listening. I pray that this will help you on your spiritual journey. Please hit that subscribe button. Please send us a uh, note. Let us know how we're doing. We're trying to reach the lives of 5,000 subscribers. We want to be in a position where we can reach out on a weekly basis and touch the lives of 5,000. We're praying. We have been in constant prayer asking God to help us to reach 5,000 people weekly. And we would love for you to go in and be help us to accomplish that. We would love for you to be one of them as well. Please subscribe and share the channel with others. Let people know that, hey, JCC is trying to give you a word that's going to be applicable to your life each and every week. Please be blessed. Again, that's all for this week. Come back next week, same time, same channel. Be blessed now.